What's up everyone, this is Sol with another video, and today I wanted to uh, go over a little bit more of the hero talent stuffs coming for the War Within expansion. Uh, in this case though, because there are so many talent trees that have come out, and it also included both of the other uh, Paladin hero specs, Paladins are kind of done. Okay, they're not done. There's going to be a lot of iteration and stuff going on, but we're going to be able to look at all three Paladin specializations, and so I wanted to kind of like you know, make a separate video just for this, so that way we can take a look at one, the new talents that are being previewed here, uh, but also try to capture the perspective of a max level player who's making these sorts of choices, and from there we'll be able to kind of like, we can kind of be like, okay, so... What am I going to choose and why? Because maybe this theme is cool or maybe this performs better. So we're going to kind of like do a uh, do an early initial impression of how this feels and find out if it sucks. So if you don't mind, like the video, subscribe for more stuff. And again, we're going to first take a look at the new spec for uh, Holy and Rhett called Herald of the Sun. Herald of the Sun infuse themselves with radiant solar energy to inflict burn on enemies and cauterize their allies' wounds. Ah, so healing through pain. They're rooted, uh, they're deeply bonded to this power and can manifest potent solar rays while fully connected to the light. Cool. So what I'm gonna do is go over the keystone, the very top thing, and then I'm gonna go over the passives first because with the keystone talent choice, you're gonna get all these passives. It's just going to come, you're going to get it. And then we're going to backtrack a little bit and then go over the choice nodes. I wanted to do it in that order to just kind of emphasize that the choice nodes are the actual choices. The passives are things that you just get when you happen to choose this specialization. So, <clears throat> Sunspot is a holy paladin. Holy Prism, if you pick it up, causes your next two holy power spenders to create a sunspot on your target, dealing radiant damage or healing over eight seconds. So, Causes your next two holy spenders. What if I use Light of Dawn? Does that hit like random people maybe? I don't know. Uh, as Rhett, uh, Wake of Ashes causes your next two holy, uh, holy power spending abilities to create a sunspot on your target doing the same thing. Basically, so in this case, sunspot, <clears throat> it does require you to pick up Holy Prism as holy. It does require you to pick up Wake of Ashes as as Rhett. So if you don't like those abilities, this thing sucks. All right. That's kind of, that's kind of thing. But then as a passive, 10% of Sunspot's damage and healing radiates to nearby uh, allies or enemies and is reduced beyond. Five. Okay. So that's cool and everything, but you still are dependent on these talents. So word of warning. Okay. So moving on, uh, we have Eternal Flame, which replaces Word of Glory. Uh, it heals an ally immediately and over an additional 20 seconds. Healing increased by... Okay. So it's similar to an old ability that uh, that paladins have. Kind of cool. Um, Luminosity. As holy, crit, the crit strike of Hammer of Wrath and Divine Storm is increased by 10%. Hammer of Wrath and Divine Storm. So this is definitely like the, hey, I want to deep stuff. Or I want to do things that are off my spec. So... As retribution critical strength, critical strike chance of holy shock and light of dawn. Okay, I want to say that this is backwards, right? <laughs> I'm hoping this is just a typo and that this is supposed to be red and like that's supposed to be holy. Um, because yeah, you can't go off spec and pick those things up. So, uh, then we have suns here, holy shock and light of dawn crits, uh, cause the target to burn for additional uh, radiant damage over four seconds or be healed over four seconds. Okay. Okay, so more stuff. So so, I wonder if Sun... Yeah, I, I really wonder if Sunspot procs off of Light of Dawn too. Anyway, as Rhett, Hammer of Wrath and Divine Storm uh, does the whole burning thing too. Okay, so more stuff. Aurora. After you cast Holy Prism, you gain Divine Purpose. What if you don't what if you're not spec for divine purpose? <laughs> I mean if you're if if you're not then uh oh um or, or or if it doesn't work if you don't have divine purpose then that would 
kind of sucks. Oh well. Uh, but if it, but this kind of helps because it's basically a free spend, a free spender that you get after using Wake of Ashes. I mean, especially after using Wake of Ashes, it's like okay, you got you got all your holy power stuff set up. You use Wake of Ashes. Now you have full full holy power and the free spender. So you basically get a free global, right? A free global with which to devastate your enemies. Uh, Solo Grace, your haste is increased by 4% for 12 seconds each time you apply a sunspot. Multiple stacks may overlap. Ah, so the more I do this stuff, hmm, how do I get more sunspots though? So multiple stacks may overlap. How would that happen? How would I get more wake of ashes or holy prisms to go out maybe, maybe i'm missing something there's probably choice nodes so we'll so we'll see um second sunrise holy shock and light of dawn have a 15 percent chance to cast again at 30 percent effectiveness nice so it's a kind of a baby crit same thing with ret you have more divine storms more hammer of wrath this is this is um one thing i'm curious about is whether or not um the holy shock procs or the Hammer of Wrath procs give you extra holy power? I'm going to guess. No, probably not. But it'd be really nice if it, if it did. All right. And then uh, the Capstone. Sun's Avatar. During Avenging Wrath, you become linked to your sunspots, causing radiant damage to enemies or healing to allies that pass through the beams of reduced beyond five targets. Activating Avenging Wrath applies four sunspots onto nearby allies or enemies and, and increases suns. Okay, so it's like... Um, it's like glimmer but violent i mean glimmer already is violent if you want it to be but like if anything this like enhances glimmer to this is like new glimmer right the cool thing is that uh popping wings will bram, you just poop out sunspots they make it sound like radiation or cancer or something like that like you're spreading cancer on your enemies that's very nice so Let's look at the choice nodes now. And here we have three choice nodes. Every five seconds, your next sunspot's damage or healing uh, is increased by 5%, stacking up to 10. Stacking up to 10. So, okay, every five seconds, your next sunspot's damage or healing, and it stacks up to 10 times. I can't imagine there being up to 50 seconds uh, between uh, popping your next Holy Prism or... Um, Wake of Ashes. Morningstar stacks twice as fast while out of combat. Oh, okay. So you're so it's kind of like your first one is gonna be like your first one's gonna be dope, right? That's kind of cool. Or you can choose this one. While the sunspot is active, your holy power spenders deal ten percent additional uh, damage or healing. So not, so a nice passive. Okay, so th this one's great for like keys or something. Cause then you'll be able to like you'll you'll be able to smash. But then this is gooder gooder. This is gooder for like a a, a a longer term fight. Okay, illumine, illumine. Oh well, sunspots reduce the movement speed of enemies by fifty percent and increase the movement speed of allies by twenty percent. Oh, that's kind of cool. What's the duration of this thing? Sunspot healing over eight seconds. So that's an eight second movement speed boost. Um. 20% boost, eight seconds, but you can't, but you don't have that much control over it. Yeah, you don't have that much control. Um, oh well. Or you can pick up Will of Dawn. Movement speed is increased by 5% while above 80% health. When your health is brought below uh, 35%, your movement speed is increased to 40% for five seconds. Oh, that's kind of neat. Yeah, that'd be a pretty good one, actually. Because that's a big boost. I don't know which one I choose. It, it, I guess it would just depend. Uh, and then Eternal Sun. Sunspot's duration is increased by two by two seconds. And Eternal Flame's duration is increased by three seconds. Nice buff. Sunspots <clears throat> leave an Eternal Flame for 12 seconds on allies or a greater judgment on enemies when they expire or if they're extended. Well, that's a big... That's a That feels like a big damage increase if you wanted to go for uh, this one in particular as a and then that's kind of it for this one so as a spec for this one 
I, I do have questions about how sunspots are applied. Like I said, I wonder um, what happens um, with like light of dawn. I mean, because there's only so many things that you can spend uh, your holy power on as as holy. It's either light of dawn or uh, word of glory or eternal flame. Sorry, uh, one of those things. I've noticed. And I'm not a good holy paladin or a skilled holy paladin that I don't really use word of glory. I mostly use um, uh, light it on for for my healing. I feel like it's kind of a waste uh, to use uh, to use uh, anything else. But oh well. Yeah, this doesn't seem so bad for Rhett, It's very straightforward, and there isn't much of a change other than you know you're definitely going to pick up. Uh, wake of ashes and it makes wake of ashes feel really strong strong but yeah not bad just kind of okay all right so templar templar stop at nothing to fulfill their divine purpose of bringing in justice and purging the wicked they call down hammers of light and then unleash devastating combinations of physical and holy attacks that vanquish their enemies this is prot and ret so just a reminder, I'm a uh, I'm a prop paladin main, so I hopefully know what I'm talking about uh, with this particular uh, spec. Uh, Light's Guidance. Eye of Tear, which looks like the emphasis here. Eye of Tear is replaced with Hammer of Light for, tw for 12 seconds after it's cast. Wait, what? Eye of Tear is replaced with Hammer of Light for only 12 seconds. So I still have Eye of Tear, but it turns into Hammer of Light. And what it does... it you hammer down your enemy with the power of the light, dealing holy damage to the target and up to four nearby enemies. Additionally, it calls down Empyrean hammers from the sky to strike three nearby enemies for holy damage. So, and it costs five holy power. Oh, boy. Fuck. So, <laughs> okay. So, Blizz, here's what I gotta do. I gotta be tanking stuff. I gotta. Ha I I prefer to have the targets near me, so I could like actually hit them with Eye of Tear. I hit Eye of Tear, boom, and then for twelve seconds, I have, you know, the second part of this combo, which is Hammer of Light. But in order to use that, I need five Holy Power to do it. All right. At level seventy one, this is gonna suck. All right. At level 71, so remember, I'm, I'm looking at this blind. I'm not, I haven't seen anything else yet. At level 71, this thing sucks. Because I'm going to be like, okay, I'm going to be leveling. I'm going to be doing stuff. I'm going to be tanking mobs. I'm going to hit Eye of Tear. And by the time I have five Holy Power, I'm probably going to kill everything. Probably, maybe. If anything, this will finish anything off. Now, this, this Hammer of Light seems pretty cool, right? This sounds like it's going to jack people up. But at level 71, this sucks. At level 80, it's going to suck. Maybe. Because, but at level 80, I'm going to have very low haste. And I'm going to be like, come on, holy power. Come on. you know, Or I'm just kind of like sitting on holy power for a little bit. Or I'm using the defensive because I need holy power for other stuff. Right? And so far, this doesn't do anything defensively. But again... I haven't looked at anything. I haven't looked at anything else. This might be better. <laughs> oh. All right. Passives first. I'm going to look at the passives and then I'm going to look at the choice notes. So shake the heavens after casting hammer of light. When you eventually do it, you call down an Empyrean hammer on a nearby target every two seconds for eight seconds. So this thing just jacks people up. Uh, and then Empyrean Hammer. When Empyrean Hammer critically strikes, 60% of its damage is dealt to the nearby enemies. Enemies hit by this effect, they deal reduced damage to you for 8 seconds. So it at least does a little bit of damage reduction. Okay. Sacrosanct Crusade. When you cast Eye of Tear, you gain Shield of Vengeance at 10% effectiveness. I am not familiar with Shield of Vengeance. That's a ret thing. So this definitely looks like... So, so this is just a purely defensive thing. Okay. 
So that's not bad. I get it like a little damage bubble. 10% seems really not great, but oh well. Uh, Higher Calling, Crusader Strike, Hammer of Wrath, and Judgment extend the duration of Shake the Heavens by one second. Or if you're a Ret, Crusader Strike, Hammer of Wrath, and Blade of Justice do the same thing. Okay. Uh, three choice nodes. Hammerfall, Shield of the Righteous and Word of Glory calls down a hammer. Hammer, wherever that is. Yeah, call, it calls down a hammer. While Shake the Heavens is active, I need to remind myself what that is. Yeah, while Shake the Heavens is active, this effect calls down an additional hammer. <clears throat> okay, they're they're not kidding with the hammers. Uh, Templar's Verdict and Divine Storm does pretty much the same thing. And then finally, Hammer of Light applies judgment to its targets and increases your haste uh, for for six seconds. Additionally, I have tier grants. Oh, thank God. <laughs> okay so this helps all right uh i have tier grants three holy power how about five <laughs> how about five okay and then finally lights deliverance you gain a stack of lights deliverance when you call down an empyrean hammer and there are all these things that call down empyrean hammers at 50 stacks because apparently there's a lot of hammers casting hammer of light empowers you for 12 seconds to cast hammer of light and an additional time for free okay so this makes eye of tear really messed up this really thrashes dudes okay let's look at the choice notes uh templar's watch for prot hammer of light this thing and eye of tear deal more damage when striking only one enemy the amount is reduced by 6% for each additional target struck, so that's nice and fairly friendly, okay. Uh, for Rhett, it's Hammer of Light and Wake of Ashes that deal uh, more damage. Cool. And the other choice is Divine Toll, if you pick up Divine Toll, uh, grants up to 100% in hundred percent damage to your next three judgments, one striking only one enemy. Oh, I kind of like that, too. Because, yeah, judgment is, like, strong. Um, this amount is reduced by 20%, but for each additional target struck. Okay. So, no, that's that's overall just good. I think I would kind of like... I'd kind of like this one more. I mean, Eye of Tear can be really strong, though. Um, but 30%, eh, I think I would get more out of... Um, I would get more out of, like, the judgments and stuff. Especially for um, rep paladins, because they they throw judgments, whereas um, prot throws shields. That that's another tragic thing. Nothing about shields here, but I guess that's kind of what, that's kind of how it goes when you're working with something that's going to work with both prot and ret. You're not going to be able to get shield related stuff. Anyway, moving on. Bonds of friendship. You receive twenty percent less damage from blessing of sacrifice, uh, and each time its target takes damage you gain four percent movement speed up to a maximum of 40 percent or divine seed lasts two seconds longer done this is the one <laughs> divine seed lasts two seconds longer and increases your movement speed by an additional 30 percent for the first three seconds oh that's good oh that's hella strong dude this is like sorry i have no bonds with my friends i'm i'm all in it for me this is a, this is a lot better control for me I don't second it. No, I don't even spec for it most of the time anymore. Like, you guys are fine. <laughs> I do it sometimes. Um, and then the last one, Endless Wrath. Calling down an Empyrean Hammer has a 10% chance to reset the cooldown of your Hammer of Wrath and make it usable. Cute. Um, and then cast, or I can choose Casting Judgment increases the damage of Empyrean Hammer by 10% for 10 seconds. So our hammer is dropping that much? I mean, ca after casting Hammer of Light, you call down a hammer. Um, Shield of the Righteous calls down a hammer. And it's another hammer while this thing is active. Okay. So I think I would like Sanctification a little bit more. So this thing has a cooldown of... 60 45 to 60 seconds depending on how, on how i spec for eye of tear 
Um, so, so the idea is, in practice, I'm going to have a horse. I'm going to have a better horse. I'm going to have a better divine toll that does more damage. And, you know, that's just kind of a kind of a passive thing. Um, uh, yeah, just just more hammers, more hammers. It doesn't really do much defensively, though. Like, I think it's just this. Um, yeah, when Empyrean Hammer, so in Empyrean Hammer crits, whenever it falls, they do 5% reduced damage to me. Uh, and I guess there's the Shield of Vengeance thing that I get as well, whenever I cast Eye of Tear. So it just makes this button really strong. Yeah, makes Eye of Tear just, just amazing, amazeballs. As for, as for Rhett, uh, it just it, it it again emphasizes wake of ashes. So, what I feel, I guess as a I guess as a as a rep paladin, if you don't like wake of ashes, you're not gonna like what's what's coming, because you're gonna feel really dependent on wake of ashes. It's becoming a non choice, right? Um, it's it's becoming like this non choice thing, and this is very much like the DPS choice to make you want to do additional damage as a paladin this is the way to go will i do it i'll definitely try it absolutely and if it's and, and if it's really effective heck yeah dude uh chat saying that every rat takes wake no i i believe that for sure like it's it's like it's such it feels like such a non-choice as it is They'll, they're just kind of doubling down on on it and be like, yeah, yeah, everyone takes this up. Um, and most most prop paladins will pick up Eye of Tear as well because it's good. It's an additional cooldown. It does decent damage if you want it to do decent damage. Um, but now let's kind of uh, let's kind of put this side by side with the current iteration of Lightsmith. So we need to kind of go over. Uh, we need to kind of go over like what the lightsmith stuff is. So I'll try to be brief on this one. So the keystone is holy armaments. It's an additional button. Yeah, it's an additional button that causes uh, that 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 creates buffs for yourself or for your friends. Uh, it's an absorb shield. Um, it gives you more health. It gives it, it gives you like a, an enchant that makes you deal additional holy damage. Um, and let's look at the passives and then we'll look at the four choice nodes and keep in mind that this thing could be totally changed because we saw this, we saw this first spec like months ago. So we'll see how this works. Uh, at the moment, if an ally picks up an armament, you know, that buff, basically you just lay down like a thing for people to pick up. Then you also gain its benefits and other allies will gain the benefits too. So it's buffs for everyone. Uh, when the armament fades... Uh, your cooldown on lay on hands is uh, uh, is reduced by fifteen. So basically, when when the effect wears off, I get a free shield of the righteous. I get a free um, holy flash of light or something like that. The effect of your active aura is increased by thirty three percent on targets with your armaments. So if I have devotion aura. Instead of 2%, it's not really 3%, but it's almost 3%, <laughs> something like that. Uh, consuming Shining Light or Infusion of Light extends the duration of any active armaments for 3%, or it reduces the cooldown. So basically, this thing, I don't know what the cooldown of this is. Um, I don't think it says, but the cooldown will, will be lower. And then Judgment Critical Strikes cause a shockwave around the target, dealing additional holy damage or healing at the target's location. That one I like a lot. And then at the bottom, Avenging Wrath, it summons another buff. As for the choice nodes, Imperial your weapon with the power of light, increasing your armor. So more armor more, or more stamina with, uh, with, with healing procs. I have a feeling that this is going to change a lot. Um... For each holy power ability cast, your next consecration does additional holy damage or healing split across all enemies. Um, 
up to a fixed total or casting a holy power spender increases the damage and healing of your next crusader strike uh which is just not a lot <laughs> Uh, another choice note, fear no evil. While wielding an armament, the duration of fear effects is reduced by 50%, uh, or uh, enemies within 5 yards of Hammer of Justice target is slowed by 15%, which is uh, yeah, that's kind of okay. Or your spells and abilities have a chance to manifest the Holy Armament nearby, which is the thing that I would definitely pick up, because I don't want to worry, I don't want to really trip about this cooldown. Uh, or to have the cooldown of Holy Armaments being reduced. I definitely would rather pick up the passive um, for this one. So, the choices are very different, right? It's at the moment, it really comes down to do you want to do more damage or do you want to do a lot more damage? You know, so, so like this one, this one is definitely like it's leaning towards like the support sort of spec kind of deal. This tree definitely leans into hey here's a you know we turn this button that you already have into something like way better now it's like freaking crazy so like i said it's been a few months since we've seen um the lightsmith stuff while the wild team hasn't said anything directly i have a feeling that lightsmith is going to change like a heck of a lot from the initial feedback because the initial feedback for Lightsmith was pretty resounding and, and I and I echo I echo most of it you know while I'm a big fan of being a support based paladin I'm not as big of a fan of having a button to press that doesn't exactly do a whole lot for me or even for other people but I also need to do a lot of management to make it a working button that feels effective. I've, it's more effort than I'd want to put into it. This right here is a very easy transaction. Boom! I have tier. I have three. I have at least three holy power on me, unless I, you know, time it well, and then I pop a uh, hammer of light immediately. I can pop a second hammer of light uh, during uh, during the duration uh, at, at no additional cost, and I'm doing tremendous damage. Lots of damage. I'm debuffing the enemies a little bit. Um, let me see what uh, I think there were like some other debuffs. Um, like like they do less damage to me. Like there was that. Um, and then what else was there? Um, while the Imperian hammers are falling, are, are are falling, I get like a little bit more. Not mitigation, but some of my cooldowns are reduced by. Uh, by a little bit. And I think that was it. Uh, I'm reading some comments here on chat. With Blizzard already announcing the Oracle getting changed, the Lightsmith not getting changes would be a huge surprise since they go in the same direction of micromanagement of support stuff that create a bigger headache than they're worth. I, I feel like the, the criticism between Lightsmith and Oracle, it's a little bit different because with Oracle, uh, there's already something there with power infusion. And one of the big criticisms was that you know, people were kind of doubling down on that need to support um, external allies. With Paladins, it's a little bit different because we always were, we always had all sorts of support abilities, uh, you know, with mostly re revolving like defensive stuff. In this case, it's both of a defensive and an offensive thing. But we've also lived in the era of, forgot the name, Blessing of Summer. Um, and Blessing of Summer was ultimately, you know, just kind of this, you know, it was an okay, it was kind of a meme -y sort of thing, but uh, ultimately people weren't very happy with the choice because they had to micromanage, they had to time it right, they needed to determine like the right order and organization, and that was, that wasn't great. My big thing against the Lightsmith talents as they are right now uh, is that it rotates between two things and I'd rather be able to just kind of choose okay I'd rather have the holy armaments be just for me or just for allies or I want to cast it directly on a person as opposed to there it is guys I put it over there I put a target marker on it no one's getting it that means you're not getting buffs it means I'm not getting buffs ah, so yeah so at the moment, as as you know, as a max level player, if I'm choosing between the two, maybe this is 
this isn't a very fair choice or, or a great example, but at least as is, this iteration of uh, Templar feels way more attractive than Lightsmith as it is right now. If Lightsmith did have some tweaks to uh, make it like a more direct sort of buff system, then I'd be happy with it. Right now, I feel really dependent on the ability for these holy armaments to spawn uh, nearby someone, but they also need to be close enough to pick it up or they need to run over it or something like that. And having my abilities require other people to change their behavior, as in move. <laughs> hey guys, move over to that. Uh, that doesn't feel great whenever I have to tell someone to move like that in order to get above. Um, you know, some encounters just aren't friendly like that. So, um, another person is is saying uh, for Lightsmith, I think we need to see how it functions in gameplay before we can really say it's bad or not. The issue with Oracle is that the gameplay style uh, was known, and that was obviously going to be an issue. I mean, as as initial non gameplay feedback. Blizzard knows it's non-gameplay feedback because that's what that's all we're able to give. So I don't think it's not valuable to say, oh, this thing doesn't feel great. It doesn't sound like it's going to be great because, hey, these are, in fact, our first impressions of these things. And putting these two kind of side by side, you know, one spec does feel a lot more direct th uh, uh, than the other. One is very, this is very easy to understand. Now, notice when I first started talking about this thing, I was like, oh, my God. This thing sucks, and I think that's I think that's the best takeaway that I can give for uh, you know definitely as a as a negative point to give about uh, the Templar spec at level seventy one. This thing sucks. This thing sucks really bad. So if I'm level seventy one, I want this one, and at level 72, 73, 74, I'm going to uh, go straight for this thing for undis for undisputed ruling because then that's going to make this ability usable. Before this, it's not, and that kind of sucks. So I almost feel like by default, I mean, once we're max level, this ability, the Eye of Tear, is going to give three Holy Power. I think they should just move this further up. Don't delay the quality of life um, perk that, we'll, that we get from this. Just give it to us right away, and then add something else that's cool. Or leave it alone right yeah maybe just leave undisputed ruling as it is hammer of light applies judgment to its targets and increases your haste sure just make that a just make that a thing because this has nothing to do you know this perk has nothing to do with i guess the thematic choice not really choice it doesn't really make sense to have it all the way down here anyway so just put it up here give it give me the three holy power right away so that way i get a better chance of using it within the window and then slowly, and then slowly, let me let me build it up. So I guess from a leveling standpoint, um, give me this thing here. Uh, since the Imperian Hammer is ruling up top, so you instantly get it. Since seventy one gives you the keystone as well as one of the next ones. Oh, is that how it works? So seventy one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, yeah, I guess that that makes sense. Or is it more like at level eighty? you just automatically get this last one or you get one of these and the last one. I guess it doesn't really make any difference, but whatever the case, give me the three holy power right away. Cause you should 71 unlocks the capstone and gives you one point to spend. Yeah. I want that point to be spent here, <laughs> right down here. Nowhere else, dude, nowhere else. Nothing else matters. Cause this is the one that's uh. I mean, I know this is mostly a prot thing, but it's such a big deal to make this uh, ability usable. So it's like with Wake of it could because think of it like Wake of Ashes that gives you holy power. If you talent for it and most rep paladins will talent for it, why don't why don't prot get it? So I have a feeling that this is going to be like this is going to be a thing. Yeah, at the moment, Templar, uh, it feels even as someone who is a big fan of playing support as a paladin templar just feels better because it feels more it feels a bit more iterated on and it feels a bit more focused as to what its job is trying to do rain hammers from the sky buddy uh lightsmith at the moment it tries to tell you 
what it's trying to do, but it doesn't quite it doesn't quite nail what the fantasy is here. So I'm I'm going to be curious to see like what they iterate on as soon as they they pull something like this out. But whatever the case, uh, you know, when I'm max level, I'm probably going to pick up a Templar and then just make choices. You know, I, I think there's some pretty clear choices as to you know what I'm going to pick based on. Hey, I'm doing keys. Hey, I'm doing uh, raids. Hey, this raids a single target versus a multi-target fight. Whatever the case, though, lots of uh, lots of I I have tier. I'm going to fully spec for it to have the reduced cooldown so I can have more proc, so I can fire it off even more. And I'm going to get nasty. So that's the feedback that I have so far. Hopefully it's of some some use. Uh, and, and the feedback, uh, you know, goes somewhere. Otherwise, let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment, like, subscribe. I'll see you guys for the next thing. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay breezy. Mm-hmm.